And we're joined now by Patrick Daniel, a volunteer who's arrived all the way from Texas. Uh, thank you uh, so much for coming on the show. So uh, what more can you tell us about the rescue efforts that are currently ongoing there? Hi, thank you for having me. Um, you know, the rescue efforts, I think, change and are updated each and every day. I think, sadly, that the news continues to be grimmer day by day as things go along. However, I think that the volunteers that are out there are making efforts at least to try and support the families, but most importantly, to support the first responders as well as support the frontline workers. Um, that's what we did. We tried to go out there and provide food, water, gum, pretzels for a lack of a better way to describe it. We basically tried to give them anything that they could find or need that they weren't able to give themselves. And with that, we thought we could give them a little boost. If we could give them a little boost, maybe that they could do their job a little bit faster. And as a consequence, we thought maybe save maybe another life. So as a consequence, we were out there um, all day for about four days and right. we've actually been working shifts. We still have somebody there that's um, going through the efforts each and every day. We just do what we can. Right, Patrick. So it sounds like you're sort of the, sort of the second line of the operation kind of behind those rescuers who are actually digging through the rubble. How many people came, volunteers, sort of showed up there in Miami to help? Our group was about five people, and then we actually kind of joined forces with Casa Church. And Casa Church had about 15 to 20 members of their congregation that was there kind of on a daily basis. So we would go and kind of set up shop there as kind of the base camp and we would go with them and bring carts of energy drinks and other things around to the police officers then the first uh line of defense workers so to speak that were working 12 and 14 hour shifts so there was a lot of local volunteers like the people from casa and then there was groups i guess like ours that were from houston texas that went and tried to support uh at least on a temporary basis. But I think there's still people out there every day that are trying to help. Right, and, and what is sort of the atmosphere, the morale like after so many days have passed, obviously uh, no, no living people have emerged from the rubble. Is is the atmosphere somewhat subdued? How are the families uh, reacting over there? And and the workers, the rescuers who are, who are trying their best, but obviously at this point, it seems like there's not much more that can be done. I think that's actually a really good question because I think initially that it was a lot more hopeful to say the least. Um, I think as time has passed, I think you actually point out that they haven't found anybody alive and that I think with each day that it becomes a little bit grimmer, so to speak. Um, when we fed the um, workers at their shift changes, they were always very hopeful, very positive. Um, but I think as time goes on, things become a little bit more inevitable, so to speak. But everybody that I've run into, whether it's a victim's family or whether it's a, a worker themselves or a volunteer for that matter, I think if you don't maintain that positive attitude, then there isn't much to hope for. So I think everybody out there is doing what they can to maintain a positive outlook, to try to move in a positive direction and just kind of maintain hope. Right, and it's obviously a very difficult situation for everybody involved. Of course, uh, Patrick, thank you for your efforts for uh, going there and volunteering and all the other volunteers who try to make a difference uh, in this uh, sort of very, very unfortunate tragedy. So thank you very much for that, and also thank you for talking to us. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you.